everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I'm going to be showing you how you, you can paint Brave Bloom yourself at home. We're going to explain every step of the process. We've got tons of support. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey, guys. He makes the curtains go now and runs all the cameras. We have a lot of cameras. We have uh, many angles so you can see the painting. Just everything you need to be super successful at this project. Also, if you check the description below, you will see more information on our materials. And if you go to our website, this particular video page has lots of extra step-by-step -step and information to help you succeed, whatever you're going through, whatever you have going on in your art studio at home, because that's the goal is to get you guys painting. All right, are you guys ready to look at the materials? I think so. Let's see if John can switch these cameras. All Boom. Right. Okay, sort of. <laughs> Did I get him? Yeah. Okay. So, um... Right here, I've got an assortment of brushes. I'm going to be using probably my number eight and my number four cat's tongue. You could use a filbert or a bright, but those brushes there, I've got a couple rounds for squigglies and a small detail for squigglies. And then I've got a couple big brights. This one is a number 30 ruby satin, and this is a number 26. Either one of these will be totally okay, so you don't have to worry about that. We have the colors Mars Black, Thalo Green, Thalo Blue, Doc's Purple, Burnt Sienna, Quinacridone Magenta, Cadmium Yellow Medium, Yellow Ochre, and Titanium White. And we're going to be starting out with just our Thalo Green and Burnt Sienna and our White. We'll okay. add colors as we go. How you doing, babe? Pretty good. And did you have, what did you have on your surfaces over there? What's, what's right here? Oh, no, on your, on your, did you have something up here? Oh. oh, yes. Well, just two seconds. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I am going to put my reference over here to the side where I can see it easily, which I didn't really plan out. Of course, there's always one thing, <laughs> one thing that I do. One thing. Now, we like to begin our paintings with some wishes. And this particular painting, because it spoke to so many people, what I did is I read every comment on every post about it, and I kind of pulled those together in wishes where I saw a lot of the same sentiment. So the first wish is that we're wishing that support and peace, love, goes out for those who have lost somebody in their lives that they deeply love. So everyone who's surviving loss. Then we are deeply wishing um, for justice and healing for victims of human trafficking and assault. We're just wishing that you guys get that justice and get that healing that you deserve. Love and healing for those going through a difficult heartbreak or breakup who are just really in the middle of that pain. Love and healing for those who are battling illness. And there are many people battling illness. And love and healing for those that are surviving and struggling with addiction. And then finally, a message that you guys are all enough. You guys are worthy and you're enough and you're strong enough to get through whatever your current challenges are. But today we're going to get through the challenge of this painting. So let's get our color put out, and I'll show you how you get that cool background in. Okay. Now I'll put my little brushes to the side so my mess don't be going everywhere and put my paint out. I actually, oops, no, phthalo blue. <laughs> it's very easy to get that confused. You would think I would start out with a phthalo green because the sky is green, but in fact, that is not what we're going to do because that green with the phthalo green is too saturated and isn't moody enough and isn't rainy enough for what we're trying to get done. I don't see my hair dryer either. <laughs> oh, I, you know what? I bet you we don't have a hair dryer. I remember dryer, you wired it up so we didn't take out all the power in the house. But we could stunt We, like, it. look cool, but we're still kind of a crazy mad show. <laughs> Let's sip my coffee while I'm contemplating the nature of the universe and coffee. And together. Well, that is one of the funniest. You're not seeing it, but I'm seeing John crawl across the floor, so that's hysterical. You just saw a shift in curtains. I don't know. I'm going to have to wait for John to come back because he's got us on pallet cam. It's okay. We're going to do this without a hair dryer. Let's close those curtains up. <laughs> Are you guys ready? This is mayhem. Okay. So. If you go by the website, you're going to see a step-by-step, -step, and that step-by-step -step pictograph is going to be really helpful to you because it's going to let you really see the layers and stages of the painting clearly. So as you're watching the video, make sure you have that resource. I think it's going to really help you be successful. Now, 
in our first set of brush strokes, we're going to be brush stroking diagonally from the upper right to the lower left. I'm going to use my big brush. You can use any big bright. That's the square brush that you have. And here's what's interesting. We're going to pull out a little bit of our phthalo blue and we're going to mix in our burnt sienna. And what a lot of people don't know about these two colors is they make a really beautiful green and a really beautiful gray. And they're capable of just creating some really fantastic mood effects. Now I'm going to mist my canvas a little bit. This is going to help me get a nice flow and also get that moody contrasting going. Sometimes it's even nice if a few little drips get going. But we don't have the hair dryer today, so I'm not going to do that. Oh, you do? Yeah, I found it for you. <laughs> okay. So you can see how we're just working this diagonally. The darker color is going to be in this upper area, and the lighter color is going to come from the bottom. And that's so that we have enough contrast on the painting. Many of you asked me about the black and white sketch that was in the video walkthrough and in some of the other step by step information. And actually, that was a value study that I did just to make sure that all the elements of the painting had a great contrast. You can see I'm just leaving it streaky, but I'm making sure that we've got quite a lot going this way. Now, I found that I needed about two layers to really get this across on my canvas. And when I come in here, I'm going to go right into the white. A lot of white, a lot of white. I'm adding a little bit of the brown into that mix. I want to make sure it's just very gray and very moody. And I'm brushing this lighter color as you can see, up into the sky above it. We're doing two layers of this just to make sure that everything is really covered and we have a good basis to build the rest of our painting on. How is everyone doing? I've missed really everybody. Good. I'm going to be real honest. I've missed you guys a lot. We've been doing a lot of work, as hopefully you can see. Um, getting caught up on things, uh, doing designs, getting ready for acrylic April, which mm -hmm. is going to be a big journey for me. Fingers crossed I make it through. <laughs> 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 That's going to be all my canvas wishes over the month of March, I'm sure. So you can see I'm just making sure the canvas is thoroughly covered. Now, right here, I'm going to work at the edge of this brush. And I'm coming here and I'm going to make a nice little zippered edge. This is what we call in painting a zippered edge. And that's one way of blurring or softening a line in the painting. There we go. Let's flip this back over. The bottom is looking pretty good, but yeah. I think I want another coat on the top. So I'm going to wipe off my brush. I'm going to get my blue and my brown again, making my dark green color that I like, my moody sky color. A little bit of the, and you can see that I'm going to come right up here, and I'm zippering this as well. See how we're zippering? Yeah. There's lots of ways to soften edge in acrylic paintings. There's wet into wet blending, there's dry brushing, there's glazing, and now we're talking about zippering. Zips. All right. Oh, I love the message of this painting so much, and I'm really glad that it conveyed well and everybody really connected to it. That was something I was super glad about. Just getting my brush wet. When you see me dip in the water, what I'm trying to do is improve the flow of the paint off my brush. Sometimes you guys at home will be concentrating so hard that just the paint load, the amount of water into your brush, and the flow of your brush will actually be really challenging. And I do have videos about that that you can check out on the website. If you search Technique Tuesdays, you're going to see a flow of a water brush paint video. Watch that and that will really help you solve those problems. Just a short little back to basics catch up that can really, really help you in your art journey. Oh, and all the videos that I'm directing to you to on the website are free, as are the traceable, because we don't always draw, mm -hmm. and uh, also the step-by-step. -step. All right. I think that's pretty wonderful, wonderful kind of ombre here, good zippering. Rinse out our brush really well, because we don't want to leave any acrylic paint to dry on a brush. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to mention to John that my... Uh, Table's at an angle, so if it goes down suddenly, that's what happened. Okay, I'll check it. No, it's okay. I just wanted to let you know. 
<laughs> it's been like, it's been sliding down. As long as you see it's okay, I'm good. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start uh, putting out my other paint colors. Um, as my painting is drying, now I'm going to talk to you about some things about this. As you're doing this, what I really want you to do is just be present in how enjoyable it is to paint. Uh, this painting in particular, because so many people are painting it to mark things that they're going through in their life, it's going to be really important to be very soft and gentle with yourself and your expectations. A lot of times when we start painting, we expect ourselves to just come out of the gate as total art masters. And we put very, very high expectations on the results of the painting instead of the process of the painting. Oh, thank you, babe. Oh, are you live? Dropped a hairdryer on my husband's head. It's good. It's good. It's good. I think uh, this one is just slightly big for the, for the hole. We'll just drill those out more. All right. Let's put out our paint. I'm going to put out some of my phthalo green. I'm going to put out my yellow ochre. I love yellow ochre. Yellow ochre and yellow oxide for the purposes of this particular hue are essentially the same. They are slightly different paints, um, but for the purposes of you, the student, they will have no impact really on your end result. One is a natural, uh, naturally sourced from the earth uh, color and one is synthetically made really the difference between them. If you didn't know, I'm going to put my little pink over here. I think I definitely want to put out some my dot purple. I love my docs purple. It's one of my faves. I've got plenty of white and maybe a little bit of my black. There you go. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I will miss my palette so it doesn't dry out on me. And I'm going to start putting in uh, my, the beginnings of my plant and everything that's going to be here. Now, a lot of you guys mentioned that you really loved the curly cues in this part of the painting. We're actually going to put a lot of this in without the curly cues. That way, once it's done, we can add these and weave them between what we've painted. And I think you guys are going to like that better. So we're going to do that this way. I'm going to grab my number eight cat's tongue to begin with. You can see it's right here. It's a nice brush about the size of my thumb and it comes kind of to a rounded point. This is for acrylic paint and you can get them all over uh, the world now actually. It's kind of cool. And I'm going to start out with a little bit of my green here. I'm going to grab a smidge of my black into that green. This is my first layer. There we go, a little smidge of the black into the green. And you can even put a little brown into it. We're creating a very deep dark color. I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna wind a line up from the bottom on the tip of my brush. It's going to stop right about at this point right here on the canvas. And it'll have a little bit of an S curve to it. As I pull the brush down, I will press harder and that thickens and strengthens the line. There we go. Once I have that basic line in, I'm going to dip in my water, load back up to improve flow, and I'll go ahead and come here and stroke out the little side bloom that's going to be coming off from the main bloom. Now let's enjoy creating our upward strokes for grass and leaves. I'm going to add a little more water. Again, improving flow is always a grand idea. And I'm going to just stroke this up. So I press hardest at the beginning. And then as I curve the stroke out, I lighten it. Mm. You'll see that the paint will skip over the surface of the texture of the canvas, but that I'm not essentially at this stage worried about that. I'll be working on those things as I do more and more of the layers. But right now that's just perfectly fine. I'm just making this background of this little grass that we've got going here. We're going to be building, building, building on. There we go. It's fun to do. Fun, fun, fun. There we go. Now I can put in some focal leaves. 
I'm mm-hmm. gonna get a little more of my color here, a little brown, a little green. You can see I'm just making this dark green. And I'm gonna come here and bring up a little leaf that's a little more thought out and defined than his friend. This is layer one on this little fellow. You can see I've curved that up, widest at the bottom, and he's tapering in. And I'm always gonna get that by my brush pressure. If I press hard, the brush stroke will be thick. If I press gently, the brush stroke will begin to narrow out. A little more brown into my green and a little more water into my brush. I try to put just the tip up to here on my brush for water. And you can see how I'm loaded up. And I'll come over here and I will add another little leaf. I'm going to maybe cross in front of that little stem friend as they like to do. Plants grow where they need to, and hopefully you will grow where you need to. There we go. Pulling another little thick leaf right here. And he can have a friend next to him. Yeah. He can. He doesn't have to, but he can. <laughs> and then just... Go ahead and add that little grass out there. And I'm going to rinse this brush out very thoroughly. You want to get all that acrylic paint out of your brushes. If you want them to last a long time, it's important to get the acrylic paint out. And I'm going to lay it flat. I'm going to dry the canvas. And the reason I'm going to dry is that I want to be able to start putting brighter colors over these darker colors. If it's still wet, the darker colors are going to mu- muggle, muddle my my uh, lighter colors so drying it at this stage is really helpful and then we'll sip coffee and we'll say hi for a second okay so while she's doing that i'm gonna say thank you guys for coming hanging out today it's been a long time since we've been live so it's really great to see all you guys again really really nice to have you guys out we love seeing you i hope you're enjoying the new studio some of the new views you can see uh we're gonna have some more stuff to show you as the day goes on um but we love having you guys here thank you thank you so much for joining us um gosh man just so many of you guys here it touches me so thank you very much some questions i'll turn it around let's see if john can okay catch hold on me. Wait, wait wait you're gonna turn around i'm gonna turn around all right let's see if we could do all that Ooh. turn this stuff off okay hey how are you guys doing all right so hopefully you're doing okay uh at this stage remember this is beginning and in the beginning of a painting things can look a little crazy mm-hmm You'll be really forgiving of my painting, whereas you'll be really hard on your own. And what you need to do is realize that paintings are built on layers. And the whole thing doesn't really come together until like, I like almost every painting. It's like the last 20 minutes of the lesson is when everything comes together. Mm. So be easy and relaxed. It's going to get there. This is where we're at now. You oh, can yeah? check your step by step. I'm going to sip my coffee. So I stay energized. I can, for my I, can, I, I, can zoom, I can go here and look at your picture. There you go. Does anybody have any questions? Then we'll oh, get let me back see to the here. next layer. Go back over there. Uh, there's been a lot of questions. Actually, let me go over and say, if you were trying to not use black, could you put Diox Purple in and get the same effect? It's a little more transparent, but yes, yeah, beautiful effect. That's another good alternative if you want to avoid black in your paint. Stephanie was having some trouble. Um, how do you prevent getting the globulates of paint on the side of the canvas? On, you know, like how they build up on the edge of the canvas when you're painting. Is there any way to help? I wipe mine little... off with a, with a paint towel. Yeah, you keep a little spare towel there it's, and just wipe that edge. It, what you? it is is that you're painting very vigorously. Yeah. <laughs> you're painting very excitedly and very vigorously. And as your brush swoops across the painting, the edge of the canvas or board or artboard is catching that uh, liquid accumulation in it. You've seen me, like, I have it on the edge of my canvases all the time. I wipe it down. Or you can, you know, you'll find that people that are a little uh, more chill in their painting style might have less of that. It's not really a right or wrong. It's just kind of about what you're bringing to the canvas that day. Sometimes I just want to throw paint at the canvas, so that's how it goes. <laughs> well, Susie has caught uh, very aptly that we have had, oh gosh, like over 560 people here. And so good to be back, guys. Yeah, thank you guys for coming. And we, what we don't have is bubbles. No, we will. We will soon, and I'm, I apologize. In the midst of all of the other robotic parts, the bubble machine, it was missing a wire. I'm going to turn around, baby. Okay. Oh, so hold on. You, you, you turn around. Um, you want to look at this? <laughs> this thing? That's what you want to look at? How about I turn and you catch me? What? 
<laughs> yeah, I did. You caught you before you turned. <laughs> I preemptively <laughs> caught you. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get my brush wet again. Okay. And I'm going to start, like, layering up my brighter, brighter colors. Okay. So I'm going to take a little bit of my cad yellow into my green. There we go. I'm not going to mix it up particularly light yet, but I am going to start to inform it. And let's come to the left-hand side of our stem. It's okay to let some of this dark color sort of peek through. That's perfectly fine. And come right here and add a little of that. We have. And then over the tops, so I just grabbed a little more yellow. I'm going to bring this and layer it over the top, painting that down. Just enjoy that. Remember to take that time to sort of enjoy the process of painting. It's really what it's about. Easy, easy to get really worried about the result the outcome and forget that the whole purpose of this is to enjoy the process um, and that's no matter where you're at in your art journey I, I would say that to professional artists is to remember to even slow down and, and remember why they started painting in the first place and not get too wrapped up you know in outcome and you don't need to pay attention to it. It's just good not to let it become shackles to your experience. All right, let's really enjoy this little leaf here. I'm going to bring a little paint down. So we've got some little leaves that we're going to be playing with. A little of the yellow into the green. And you can see this part of the flower then is much brighter than that uh, background area. And that creates sort of the depth and shadowing that we're looking for. There we go. Isn't that fun? Yeah. These will layer through. Now, get a lot more of your yellow onto your brush. You're making quite a brighter color. And go ahead and pop a little bit of this much lighter value to the edge of some of your leaf. Doesn't need to be all of it. Just some of it. I'm going to stop there and then come right there. And you can see where that is. It starts to inform where the shape or bend of something might be where our light sources are. And get a little more of the yellow. And just enjoy how these values can create form in your painting. I really like to see how the different greens play. I'm going to add some of these light colors into my grass. Not too much. Just to keep that value where yellow is a very light value. So if you imagine that there's no color here and you think of this in a grayscale, yellow would be very akin to your white. So it gives you lots of drama in that space. Now the next thing that I get to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to get my black. I'm going to really load up my brush with some black. This, to me, is a super, super fun part of the process. I'm going to put this right here where I can see it, because I really like how I get these little uh, plants in and everything. So the first thing to do is come here with your black and add just a few of these dark, wilted grasses. Here. Can you see these here? So this plant will appear to be fully blooming out of an area that's wilting all around it. Don't be too heavy here. Just be a little bit here and there. Right? And as you come out here, you can be a little more heavy-handed. Grab some of your brown and mix it loosely into your black. And let's start to add to the rest of the space. So see how we're adding the little grasses coming up? Yeah, here it is, where it goes out into the wilted space. I just like to loosely mix those together. 
you want to just make sure that it appears that your ground is very full and very finished. I'm working the tip of my brush. Breathe in, breathe out. Remember not to hold your breath. A real big problem for new painters. I'm going to rinse out thoroughly. I'm going to load back up with my black paint. And so you see me going and dipping uh, water into, uh, I dip my brush into water and then I bring those one or two drops over to the paint. And I'm swirling this around into the heavy body paint because sometimes heavy body doesn't really flow off the brush very nicely. And so you have to amend it with water or medium to get that result. Now let's put a really lovely wilted bloom right here. So I'm going to come right here. This is just about the halfway mark of the canvas. And I'm going to make a strong little stroke like that. And then another little kind of off its corner stroke. Plant here and come forward. Okay, I'm just working those shapes out. Working those shapes out. Now you can lift out, press, and come down. Yeah, that makes like a crazy little wilted leaf. Yeah. Bring a little friend here and drop that down. I think these wilted little petals are the most fun to paint. Little flower. You're going to be adding purple to that, but it's a good basis for where you're going. Now I'm going to take a little break here. Coming straight out. I'm going to take little hard turns. So instead of making fluid organic turns, as you will sometimes do, make these little harder turns. See how we come down? I've got my little piece right here where I can even see it. So I like to come up to a very sharp point and then I press. This reminds me a little bit of calligraphy when I do it. So that's kind of what I try to pull from is this sense of, of, of almost a calligraphy type of mark. Making sure that things are dry and brittle and worn out. Now I want another little friend here. A little bit lower, a little bit more in this space. I'll break another little pod right there. This one's going to face down a little bit more. Its little petals are even be a little more wilty. Fun stuff. Little bit of break, the hard angles. Celebrate how brittle plants can be. Come down with that black. Come up with a little dry leaf right here. That's why. Hmm. <laughs> Having trouble control the camera. Yeah. Was on the wrong camera. <laughs> well, <laughs> learning curves. You know, so we have a nice little arrangement of dead blooms right here. But remember, even sometimes when a plant appears dead, it's not really dead, is it? It's sleeping, it's hibernating, it will be coming back. So even among the wilter flowers, there's an implied hope because we know things come in cycles. I'm going to do another little downward bloom right here. So it's like kind of tapered towards the back and opens up. Press out and bring it down. No, you don't have to have this specific brush. You could get this with a round brush. It's really about recognizing that how you're doing the brush stroke is okay. Bring this up here, and then I'm going to take it at an angle down. 
I would say the number one thing when you're trying to show that something is maybe wilting or dried out is to, in organic spaces, maybe do more fluid round angles and then as they break down, make them uh, sharper, more distinct. Okay, hold on just, just a second. Everything okay? Okay. Oh, I'm frozen. I think we're back. Uh, unfortunately, your audio isn't syncing again. Your audio went out of sync. So give me a second to work on that for a second. While you're... Oh. <laughs> so let me fix a couple things, guys. So as it would appear, we have had a little bit of issue uh, this show, as you can see, because there was um, there was a mistake in something, and I'm not exactly sure what broke, but something did, but I do know how to fix it. It just takes me a second to kind of fumble through things. And I think, are you there? No, it's not still not showing you. So I have to do one more change. Yes, and this is going to, I'm going to get this, I promise. You're too, okay, hold on, maybe, I'm, I'm trying, I so, I'm so wishing this would work, because it will, I'm, I'm like, they're seeing us struggle. Unfortunately, I'm just not seeing your audio come in. And that's where... Give me it, folks. I'll be right back. I promise. Watch this. Shh. I can do this. I promise. You ready to smile? Here we go. Hey guys, hopefully we're back. Are we I back? Think, I think so. Okay, let's hope. I hope so. Let's be wishful that we're... Oh, no, that's the worst. What? No. Um, you can see this is a professional show. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. We're back. We're sort of back. Okay. So back to our broken and wilted flowers. <laughs> so hopefully you're understanding this process of that you're keeping... <coughs> Of course, I cough now. The brush strokes uh, sharp and angular. We're pressing the hardest at the beginning of the stroke and lightening as we go. I'm going to load back up with some black paint. Like you do. And this particular leaf, I want to cross in front of my stem because I feel like that will be a little dramatic. And then maybe some more little wilted leaves that are here and there. I'm going to rinse out my brush. And interestingly enough, the next color that I'm going to go into is purple. Now to do that, I want to dry the painting. You want to make sure your black is dry before you add the purple or the grayed out yellow. It's not that we don't even have some of those colors in the mix, but you want to have control over what you've got going on. Okay, so while she's doing that, I'm going to say thank you guys for hanging out and bearing with us while we're figuring out all the technical stuff today. 
it's been a little challenging. You know, getting back into the groove of our live show. But oh, it's uh, we really, really appreciate it. We love having you guys with us. This is just, you know, our favorite thing to do. And it's going to take us a little time for us to get used to the new studio. Things are looking really good. They're working really well for us. As you can see, um, it's just really easy for us to uh, fix things, really, relatively speaking. So, yeah. What you got right. over there? I am going to take a smaller cat's tongue. I just want a smaller brush for this next part. So I'm not really working so hard uh, to get the results that I want. And I'm going to get my purple, just my straight purple, and I'm going to mix just a small amount of white to it because I want the purple still to be fairly dark. And I may even come and get a smidge of my yellow ochre into that mix. There we go. Now I'm going to come here, and where we have the bud coming out, I'm going to press a few little purple highlights of what is petals. Letting each of these little blooms wilt down. They still have almost a small amount of color on them. And that calls to the flower that they once were. And that can be a very special thing to remember. Now I'm going to add a little more yellow, this yellow ochre, into my purple. And I'm going to get this gray purple color. Now I'm going to add a lot of white to that. See how we go? A little more yellow. We're going to come to the top, adding just a few little spots in the highlight. A little more white. It's not too much. It's just just a little highlight and a couple of the petals. Just to make sure that we can see their color. I'm going to rinse out very thoroughly. And now I will get into my <laughs> twigs. <laughs> it just goes for you. <laughs> I'm going to take a little black into my yellow ochre, and it's going to gray it a bit. You could gray with Diox Purple, as was asked earlier, so if you didn't want to use the black, that's what you would switch into. I'm going to add just a smidge of white to that mix. And when I have a nice, mm, let's even get a little, we want dried plant, don't we? A little burnt sienna. We're going to come here, and I'm going to add just a few highlights to the outside of the stem. And a few on my little dried out leaves. And you can see it's just a very delicate little touch. Come to the top. Break it down. On the top right here. You can see we're looking for little surfaces that might have picked up some, some of the little light that's going on. Let's come to the top of this. Make sure we've got a little, a little bit of that dried highlight there. Down the stem. Oh, I'm going to like this leaf. Now, it looks like you used some brighter purples in this one. Um, yeah, I think I might have actually mixed them a little bit brighter this time. I might have added a little bit less yellow. Yeah. Sometimes you'll mix something... Like a little bit brighter, you'll have a little more purple or a little less yellow. And that happens. Have, you should play with the colors and get things to where you're happy with the result. So when when you're oftentimes when you're painting a study like you did for this one, you <laughs> in your second time around, you may want to change some things. And so you're tuning things constantly, aren't you? Always tuning, always adjusting, always pushing contrast. There we go. See, we're just defining these little break in the leaves. I'm going to get a little bit of the water on here. Maybe a little bit up here. 
just jumping around making sure that that exists. Top of this flower. There we go. Sometimes uh, people like the painting that I do in the show a little more than the studies because through this journey, I will have more things that I think about or I'll push a color value further. They really like that. So we're going to get the quite light highlight. Find that. We're going to come to the top, but not everywhere. See that? So it's yeah. quite light. Dip in water to improve flow. It's okay sometimes to even get a little bit of the add yellow into it. Little highlights. Right here, little touches right here maybe. But what you're looking to try to do is be a bit delicate with what you're doing. So I'm using the number four cat's tongue, but you could use a number four round. You could use any brush that you feel like you've got a good handle on and you're used to getting a good result from. Always use the brush or tool you're confident with. Don't uh, be overly concerned necessarily in having a particular brush unless that's the only way to complete a, a stroke or technique, which in this particular painting, that would not be the case. There we go. A little bit of those, a little bit of those nice highlights, right? And again, you can come in and a couple spots, a little bit of that yellow here and there. But be light with it. You don't want it everywhere. You want it some places. So that it kind of pops out and it looks good. And I'm going to see if my studio assistant off camera, honey, will get me a fresh water. I know I poured one, but I don't think I got it out here. Mm. <laughs> honey? I don't know if she's, honey, she's around. You may, I, I may she's, have to stunt hands you. You may have to stunt hands me. <laughs> you might. That's okay. Now, I'm going to draw something out so that you can see it. Uh, maybe while I'm drawing, John can grab the water for me. Yeah. Oh, I think she's here now. All right. And the reason I'm asking for fresh water is the blooms are quite a bright color set. They're very different than everything else in the painting. So the grayness of the water will actually kind of negatively impact the result. And that's why I'm going to that trouble. Now, I'm going to just very lightly with kids chalk kind of talk about the shape of the flower that I might be wanting to do right here. Just so I have some sense of where I want to put it and how large I want it to be, how focused I want it to be. I like to use this chalk from a chalkboard because it's very easy. And we'll see that there's a nice little bloom right there. It's very, very easy to remove with just a little bit of water. Okay. So the first part of our strokes are going to be a lot of white and a little bit of our pink and some yellow. I'm going to come here with this brush. You can see how it's just sort of loosely mixed and loaded. I'm going to press in and pull down. Get a little more white. And a little more white. It's a pretty thick load, isn't it? Curving that in. A little pink, a little yellow. You want a bright flower. It's right here. Maybe that petal is quite big and defined. There we go. I like that. I'm going to rinse out. And then I'm going to come and get a little more pink into that mix as I go forward. 
This is going to create a nice barrier for when I get the purple in there because I don't want to mix the purple and yellow too much. So really thick load on the paint, see? Okay? Inside of the bloom. A little more paint on there. It feels like there's some layers of petals. Then I'm going to get my purple. And it can mix right into my quinacridone. And I'm going to make sure that there's this dark center. Yeah, little dark center. I want it to peek up. I'm going to rinse out. And while I'm letting that have a little bit of a dry, I'm going to do a little bit of work here. Similar to what I had before, which is a little bit of yellow, a lot of pink, and some white. I'm going to just color this little kind of blossom. It hasn't fully opened yet. Let's get a little of our pink and purple together again. Always add some white to it to bring out those colors. We're still painting wet into wet. Oh, isn't that, oh, that one's really pretty. Love it when they come out like that. Makes me so happy. <laughs> it's like perfect bloom. Celebrate the moment. Love and life. Now, to get the next layer in, I'm going to need this to be dry so that I can layer these petals over the top of this, implying that this is an open bloom and we're seeing a little bit into the center. You guys ready to do that? We're nearly done. Now, there it goes. So while she's doing that, I'm going to look over and say, ah, yay, all oh, 500 people still here, yay. Thank you for coming in and out. I appreciate you bearing with me while I have all my little technical hurdles. You did great, Push. babe. It's our first time back in a month, and we have, we have literally moved everything in our house. You can't see that, but we've all lived through it. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's been... And interesting. Okay, so a little more pink out here. You can see I've got that there, and a lot of white. Notice that this is a very thick and loosely mixed application of the paint. A lot of this is about just letting this be what it is on the canvas. Now I'm going to come here and begin that layer. See that? Right here, pull that in, curve that stroke. A little pink, a little white. I'm going to come across to this side. There we go. Maybe a little white, a little yellow. Right here. Making sure this part layers there. There we go. I'm going to get a little thicker white area. Try to make sure that I've got this fairly well defined. Now I can come in with a little more pink. Right here, talking about the petals themselves. Sometimes it's very hard to just relax and be loose with your flowers, but it's okay to do that. And I personally think I would like a little bit of the kind of magenta purple. So I'm just going to grab what's here. I'm going to mix it much stronger to the magenta. And I'm going to make sure that sort of pulls up from the bottom. Now, a nice little thing that you can do is you can make the inside even a little bit darker if you want. Just where we're going to have petals, okay? Just increasing that value. I got a little paint on my hand, which got on my canvas. So I'm going to take a clean brush and kind of before it dries, take that away because I don't want paint there. Now, while I'm letting all of this have a little bit of a rest, I get to enjoy my curlicues. To do my curlicues, I'm going to get my round, my number four round. 
I'm going to get it wet. I'm going to put a lot of green into it and a lot of yellow. Really load that up on the tip. I've got a lot of water into that mix. So it's going to flow off very nicely. And let's come here to this one. Let's wander. Just play for a little leaf off there. Sometimes I'll add a little bit of white to this mix to even exaggerate it more. I don't feel like you can really take it too far. So just enjoy. Let's put another little one here. I'm going to dip in the water to improve the flow of my paint. You can see I roll out the round and reload. It's still loosely mixed, but I'm just trying to make sure that I'm enjoying. Let's see. You lean over just. Oh, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So whimsy. Is that right? A angle? little more whimsy on here. You can add a few of those colors through your stem, through everything. If this is dry enough, you can go ahead and grab some of your green and come right here and paint in the base now. I'm back with this yellow mix. There you go. Just pulling that up to make that interesting. Yeah, we do. Got another little one we can put over here. Why not, right? Why not? Why not? I don't know. Why not? You can see I'm just pulling little kind of whimsical lines. But I'll go grab that yellow. Make that a little more interesting. You can all, always pull all these colors and these events through the piece so that you're enjoying it thoroughly. Now, the next part, it's a good idea to draw this so you can kind of define these petals a bit. So go ahead and draw that, and then we'll do the rain and signature. So while she's drawing that, um, I'm not sure if she meant to say draw or dry. But maybe she's going to dry and draw. You know, I'm probably overthinking this because I can just ask her as soon as she comes back. But until then, okay, well, she's back, so I'll ask her. Did you mean draw or dry? Uh, dry first so you can draw. Okay, that's what I was thinking. I'm going to put out some white I can easily get access to because I need to have a little cleaner white, even though I'm going to be adding yellow into it. I'm going to dip my brush in some water, add a little yellow to the white. And I'm going to come through here and pick out the tops of these little petals. And maybe define them in a little more considered way. See how we're doing? Yeah. See, this little petal is smaller, and this little one is bigger, but we're just grabbing our white, and we'll find a little edge here. Going to make your flower a little edgy? You got to make your flowers edgy, right? There we go. See how we found those little edges to those petals? We made it more of a peony than daisy. A little of the yellow and white. 
And I like to just really wiggle those edges. I think it adds a lot. Just wiggling and playing. I do the same on the little bud. Not a huge amount, but just a little bit. Maybe even within the layers. You can then come in and just make sure that you're really happy with each petal inside. And you'll see that I'll grab some color. And I can come in and define that. See, I grabbed a little pink and a little yellow. Yeah. Sometimes we paint very uh, constructed and tight from the beginning when we can use a very loose lay-in method. Let's grab a lot of white. Help us make an even more beautiful result. Look at that. And that coming together? Yeah. Sometimes I like to add a little yellow into that. Just find your space in the piece. Okay, there we go. Easy peasy open flower. Oh, colorful. Now, one of the nice things is the rain. I really, really like the rain, but I feel like I want another light highlight on my greenery just to pop it one more time. So I'm going to grab a lot of white into this green yellow mix at first. And let's put in just a little bit of this last highlight right here. You guys see it? Yeah. Maybe even here in the curly cues. Hmm. Trying to find a good angle. You gonna flip your canvas? Maybe. Yeah, I think so. Thank you, babe. Flip you like a little bit? Yeah. Doesn't hurt to catch a little sunlight. Where you can look at that every time you paint it gets more fun rinse out thoroughly rinse out thoroughly and you're going to get the white loaded on the tip of your brush you could use your rounder cat's tongue i'm using my number four cat's tongue and you're going to make rain strokes and they are just dashes that travel At the angle. From this, from this upper right corner down towards this lower left corner. Now I am careful with where I put them. And the reason that I'm sort of careful about that is I don't want to take out the designs, the parts of the design that I like. We're just here to talk a little bit about the storm. And see, I can come from off the canvas with some of these. You want to make sure all the paint underneath is dry or it will drag the color through. Then you end yeah. you know, with a kind of funky. When you have an amount of rain that you're happy with, you can get a small little detail brush. And I know I put some out earlier. There they are. I like the yellow and white, so I'm going to come here with a little bit of my yellow ochre into my white. 
I'm going to give this a signature. Ah. I like okay. to sign in a way that doesn't detract from the overall balance of the canvas. Um, I work really hard to design these images, and I love my signature. Um, and it is important sometimes to let people know who made the painting, but I don't want the signature to become more important than the entire composition. Right. It's a bad form. But it's your painting, so you should do it at whatever way you want. You're the artist. Okay, you guys ready to see the painting all done? I think so. All right, one, two, three, turn around. Okay. Woo! How would you guys do? You feel good? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, step out of the way so he can zoom in. You can kind of get a look there. Missed you. Let us know what you think of the new format, the new kind of space, what we've got going on. You guys were the ones that helped get us here. Uh, obviously, we still have some things to kick out, but I think we've pretty much got it. John is amazingly brave. I want I'm you guys trying. to be good to yourself. Be kind. And be good to each other. We're all going through something right now. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.